Well, last week we ended up going through the irons that I needed to repair. I repaired one. There's eight total. Two of them were good, so I actually had five left to do. So this is just a short recap of those repairs that I did. This is the one I now just repaired. This next one is the one that broke off when I was trying to straighten it. So I'll do the same to that one. I'll weld it back in. This next one is actually in pretty good shape. This one from the right front is real thin in through here. This next one is the left front. Might build some of this back up again. This is the left rear, and it's actually in pretty good shape. The right, third back, so this is a center brace on the right side. It's got a lot of rust and corrosion. I'll probably build that up as well. And this is number two on the right side, and it's got a bend in it, and it's really eaten out pretty deep. And now the goal this week is to get the sideboards and the bench boards fitted to these irons.
Well, with the sideboards on, the next step for these next two boards are for the benches. And as I've been measuring from the inside of this sideboard to this upright for the bench iron, I notice I've got some variations in those widths. This front left iron, as I come out, I'm about an 18 and 3 16 from the inside of this board to the corner here. As I go back to the second iron, I'm also 18 and 3 16 to the corner. As I go to the third iron back, I'm right at 18. And I go to the rear iron on the left side, I'm right at 18, maybe 18 and a 30 second, but 18, they're really close. And as I go to the right front, I'm 18 and 1 8. The second one back on the right side, I'm just right at 18, maybe that 18 and a 30 seconds, but I'm gonna call it 18. The third one back on the right side, right at 18. And the rear iron on the right side, I'm 18 and a strong 16th almost could call that 18 and an eighth. If I cut all these at 18 inches, I've got four irons that I'm gonna have a space between the end of that board and that iron. So I'm gonna cut these at 18 and 3 16 for my left bench and 18 and 1 8 for my right bench. And I'm thinking I'll just probably take and kind of float them down, leaving the edge on my side bench straight but make the variation on the end of these irons, which will be the least noticeable. But that's the way this sheep wagon was built. Well, to fit my benches onto these side irons, I've got to get rid of these C-clamps. So there's a top bolt that goes through each of these irons. I'm going to put a bolt in to hold these in place so I can fit my benches. Then I'm going to take things apart because I want to age this with my metal filings and vinegar treatment. So the customary way that these irons would be attached generally on most all sheep wagons, farm wagons, that these would be riveted. 
that's traditional. Now this was made locally just 26 miles down the road and obviously these were square punched for the head of a carriage bolt to be on this side. The carriage bolt design like this is designed for the head to be brought up against the wood and this square portion goes into the wood to keep it from turning. So typically the bolt would go in this direction. But for some reason, this bolt has been designed to go this direction and probably to keep the flush head on the inside where the passengers are gonna be or the shepherd would live and the nuts on the outside. So this is kind of contradictory to this style carriage bolt. But again, that's how this sheep wagon was built. This is not the manner that I would do it if I was building it. But there again, it's not about me. It's about the wagon duplicating how it was built when it was built. But this will give us a clean surface to fit our benches.
Well, having my boards fitted up, both the sides and the benches to this old iron, before I go bolting this all together, I want to take and do this darkening aging effect with my vinegar solution. So this is the vinegar and metal filings that I did about two weeks ago that I did on the floor. And I did a little test on this poplar. And this is what I had here. This is one coat, this is two coats. And it has a little more of a rusty red color, which isn't all bad. And this is what I've been playing with with a new solution. What I did yesterday was I put some metal filings and some vinegar, and then I added five black tea bags to the solution. So this black tea has been soaking in this solution as well for about 24 hours. It has more of a black look than it does the rusty red look. But this will eventually turn a little more rusty red as it sets as well. So this section here is with one coat after this had set for 24 hours. This section here is with two coats of this. This end here is three coats, one, two, three. And this was only after about six to seven hours of soaking in the solution. So there's not a lot of difference each time it gets progressively a little darker. So I'm probably going to use this solution for the sideboards and come up with somewhere in this area here. So I'll go ahead and disassemble these boards and spray some of my vinegar filing solution on there. And it'll take a couple days. I'll probably do it and let it dry a day and then maybe put on a second coat and just kind of play with it a little bit and we'll see the results more probably into next week's video. Anyway, appreciate you following along on the progress of this sheep wagon. Thanks for watching.